By the end of this video, you will be able to answer these key points. Welcome to the coverage of the Lindoris Abbey Rapid. You have got to be kidding. This is the All Chinese quarterfinal. Yu Yang Yi versus Ding Li Ren. First up is a player introduction. Yu Yang Yi is Chinese number 4, world number 23, in Rapid with a rating 27.38. Ding Li Ren, he's 27 years old, Chinese number 1, Rapid, world number 3, with a rating 28.36. The match situation is Ding is leading 2 1. It is a four game match. Hence, Yu has to win this game to force a tiebreak. Yu has white, Ding has black. The game began. e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop c4, the Italian game. Knight f6, and now knight g5. A very sharp line. White has two pieces attacking the f7 pawn. So black needs to block the bishop. So let's strike in the center. It's also the best move with d5. E takes d5, and now let's attack the bishop with knight a5. Bishop b5 check, now let's block this check with c6. Take, let's take with a pawn, so then we continue to attack the bishop. And now queen f3. Here we go, a very sharp line. Because in this position, I can't believe it, but black played c takes b5. This is a line I've never seen before. In this position, I had seen rook b8, and then white does have the option to play bishop c6, check, getting another pawn. But after knight d7, black has a lot of compensation. Rook can go to b6 to attack the queen. You can also go bishop b7 to attack. Bishop e7 is next, and then you can castle quickly. So after rook b8, a better move is not to grab another pawn, maybe bishop d3 or bishop e2. Now after queen f3, c takes b5 was played in the game, but I must comment on h6 because on the chess 24 stream, Jan Gustafsson mentioned this. He said he covered it in his chessable course, and this is the amazing line that he gave. After h6, firstly you can't go bishop c6 check because you take, and after queen c6 check, you go bishop d7, and we have the problem. The queen and the knight are attacked. So after h6, you have to move the knight back. So let's go to e4, and now you take on b5. Wow, check this out. This is just amazing. Knight takes f6 check. And here, don't take with a queen, you take with a pawn. It's very important the queen is still on the back, defending the bishop on c8. Because after queen takes a8, this queen is attacking this bishop. So after this capture, queen d7, and the compensation has just begun. White has moved only his queen. He hasn't castled. It's like he hasn't moved any pawn. And black is ready to develop very, very quickly. The bishop can go to b7. Bishop e7, rook g8, maybe black can even castle. So this is crazy. If we go a bit further, it makes sense white should retreat the queen. And then here, there are a few moves. You can go bishop e7, defend your doubled f pawns, and then go bishop e7 or rook g8. So queen f3, let's have a look at the game. c takes b5. You took the rook, bishop e7, by ding. Castle, and now h6. Now he kicks it away. Knight e4 and queen d7. Now what do we notice about the variation and the moves ding is playing? It looks like ding may have seen Yang Gustafsson's course. Maybe he got the moves in the wrong order. Because after knight f6 check, ding takes with a pawn. It's almost exactly the same. And this is the first point I want to make. If you want to check out some new ideas, then have a look at video series by Jan Gustafsson. He's done so many series on Chess24. The one that I really liked was the one on the Catalan. When I watched that, I really liked the idea of going bishop f4, then queen c1 in the Catalan. And after bishop f4, you can go queen takes f4. Queen e4. This makes a lot of sense. You're bringing the queen back. Now rook g8. Bishop b7 is very dangerous. So white now plays f3. White's idea is to go queen e2, use the queen as a defender. f3 turns out to be a losing move. So let's play the first move and then we'll see shortly. Bishop c5, check. And it looks like the king should go in the corner. 
d4 was played in the game. So first let's have a look at king h1 and pause the video to find a tactic. Why didn't white just tuck the king on h1? What did white miss here? I'll give you five seconds. White missed the beautiful shot. Rook takes g2. Firstly, what happens if king takes? Queen h3 check. The king has to go back and queen f1 is a very nice check mate. After rook g2, the best move is queen h4 because you want to stop black from playing queen h3. But this looks hopeless because you can just bring the rook back. But why is white still fighting? Because having moved the queen to h4, white actually has a threat of b4 attacking both minor pieces. So the game still goes on. You still have to be accurate. So how to finish it off? You still put the queen on h3. This threatens queen g2 checkmate, so after take take, the bishops are just slicing the board. Bishop g2 is mate, so white has to get rid of the bishop. So he takes on c5, takes the rook, and black is much better here. If you try to get your pieces out, well, it's too little too late. Knight c3, let's kick it away. And knight e4 is the best option. And we'll see why knight d5 doesn't work, because bishop g2 check, king g1, bishop f3, and then we pick up the knight. So after b4, knight e4, if you play bishop g2 check, king g1, here knight g3, f5, and black is much better. Back to the game, that's why you had to play d4, because after bishop d4 check, he blocks with bishop e3. But still, the queen comes into the action. Queen h3, threatening checkmate on g2 once again. Rook f2 and bishop b7. Queen h7. Finally, white attacks one of black's pieces. So black has to act fast, so he crashes through anyway with rook g2 check. Got to take, bishop e3 check. King in the corner, and now queen takes f3 played in the game. But ding, missed, bishop takes f3. And this is the next point I want to make. Black can maintain the pressure using the bishop pair and the queen by capturing the pawn on f3 with the bishop rather than the queen. So let's see what happens in this line. Queen g8 check, king e7. Queen g3 trying to trade queens off, but black says no. Let's go queen h5, maintaining the pressure. Now you can go queen g2 check, but queen h5 is even better. Because if white is not careful and he just plays a move like knight c3, finally getting his queenside pieces into the game, then bishop f4 is a beautiful finish. The bishop pair and the queen really do work so well together. Because when you move the queen, there's a really nice checkmate here. Using the pin. So knight d2 is the only move. But this doesn't look like it works. You've got to attack the bishop. And maybe you get your a1 rook in the game. So let's take the guy. And this is the problem. It just looks hopeless. The pin is still maintained. And you can take on g2 next. Back to the game. King h1. And now queen takes f3 played. Black is still winning. Queen g8 check, same as before, king e7 and knight c3. Bishop g5, cutting off the coordination. The queen no longer protects the rook, so you have to use the other rook to protect the rook. Now, after knight c3, instead of bishop g5, you could play b4, just asking, where is that knight going? Because if it goes to b5, then bishop goes back to b6, and the knight is actually trapped, you can go a6 next. The rook on g2 is useless, you can attack the knight, it's all over. In the game, Ding played bishop g5, so you got to go rook g1, and now queen f2. A strange move, and you'll see why shortly. A move that wins is knight c4, but based on the match situation, it doesn't really matter, because Ding only needs a draw to win this match. Knight c4. The knight has been on a5 since move 5. It is now move 23. It's time to get it back into the game. If knight takes b5, Knight e3. Queen b8, trying to cause some havoc. But just keep calm, just bring the queen back. And knight g2 will be next. Yeah, even here, I think you can just go knight g2 anyway. Oh no, sorry, careful. Knight g2, I think, loses. Oops, that's funny. Queen d8, check. And then knight c7 is mate. So, just be safe, bring the queen back, and knight g2 is next. Also, queen c6 covers all the checks. However, in the game... Queen f2 is played, because Ding is a very practical player. He doesn't care. He just wants to win this match. Queen b8 played by you. And here, Ding just 
finished it off. Not with a victory, but with a perpetual. Bishop takes g2 check. Rook takes g2, queen f1 check. Game over. And by that, I mean match over, because rook g1, queen f3 check, rook g2. This is a typical perpetual pattern. Queen keeps checking, the rook has to keep blocking, the king cannot move, and that is over. Threefold repetition. Ding wins the match two and a half, one and a half, and that is what matters. This brings me to my final point. Sometimes in the end, it is good to be practical. Because of this, you and Ding will play again to decide who will go through to the semi-finals. It's one or in their matchup. Check out one video here and another one over here. If you enjoyed the show, why not like the video and subscribe to the channel at the same time? Don't forget to hit that bell to get notified each time I release a new video. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.